Aegon the Conqueror married both of his sisters, as per Valerian practices, Visenya the Elder and Rhaenys the Younger. Both had traditional Valerian traits with silver blonde hair and violet eyes. Both women were very different from each other. It's said Aegon married Visenya out of duty, but Rhaenys out of love. However, despite their differences, both women gave the king a son. Rhaenys gave the king a son first, with Aenys, born in 7 AC. It's said the baby was small at birth and sickly, crying all the time. The king's maesters feared the boy would not survive. He would not feed from his wet nurse, only his mother, and that when he was weaned, he cried for a fortnight. It's not until he was given a small dragon hatchling, Quicksilver, he began to grow. The prince was three years old when his mother and her dragon Maraxis were shot down and reportedly killed at Hellholt during the First Dornish War. The young prince stopped eating and began to crawl as if he'd forgotten how to walk. Many thought the king would take a new wife as Rhaenys was dead and Visenya rumoured to be barren. Many lords and noble knights presented their daughters to the king, but Aegon did not take another wife and kept his thoughts to himself on the matter, so no one could really say for certain the king's reasoning. All ideas of Aegon taking another wife ended in 11 AC when Queen Visenya announced their pregnancy. Prince Maegor was born in 12 AC and was the opposite of his brother, described by maesters as robust. He weighed twice as much as his elder brother at birth. The brothers were never close as children. Prince Aenys was heir and kept close by his father's side. As the king travelled about the realm on royal progresses, Aenys followed him. Maegor would remain with Visenya, sitting at his mother's side as she held court in the king's place. Aegon and Visenya were often apart during these years. When he was not travelling, the king would reside in King's Landing with Aenys, while Visenya and Maegor remained on Dragonstone. For this reason, lords and commoners came to call Maegor the Prince of Dragonstone. Queen Visenya put a sword into her son's hand at the age of three. It said the first thing he did was butcher a castle cat. However, it is most likely this is rumour spread by his enemies later in life, but Maegor did take the sword play like second nature. His brother, Prince Aenys, was so often at his father's side, much of his instruction in combat came from the Knights of the Kingsguard and Aegon himself. Those who taught him all agreed he was diligent and did not lack for courage, but he did not have his father's size and strength. The prince would not disgrace himself in battle, but no songs would be sung of him. Aenys' gifts laid elsewhere. He was said to be a fine singer with a strong, sweet voice, much like his mother. He was courteous, charming and clever, with an ability to make friends with ease. He was a strong horse rider, but preferred to ride his dragon Quicksilver. Prince Maegor showed no such love at animals after a horse kicked him in the head at the age of eight. He stabbed the horse to death and slashed half the face of a stable boy who came running to the prince's aid. The Prince of Dragonstone had many companions during his childhood, but no true friends. He was argumentative and quick to take offence, slow to forgive and fearsome in his wrath. His skills with weapons was unmatched. At the age of 12, he was battering seasoned men at arms into submission in the castle yard, and on his 13th name day, his mother, Queen Visenya, gave him her own Valerian steel blade, Dark Sister. Tradition among the Targaryens had always been to marry within the family. Brother to sister would be ideal, failing that uncle, aunt, niece, nephew or cousin. Practice dates back to old Valyria, among those who bred and rode dragons. The idea was to keep the blood of the dragon pure. Some even took more than one wife. However, this was much less common. Before the doom, it was written in Valyria that a thousand gods were honoured, but none were feared. So few dared to speak against these customs. However, this was not the case in Westeros, where the faith was not questioned. Barred the old gods in the north and the drowned gods in the Iron Islands, faith of the seven was the main religion of Westeros, and feared by all, and was an authority on many matters. Even before the doom of Valyria, the faith condemned the Valerian practice. In hindsight, conflict was inevitable. Many took issue with Aegon's marriages to his sisters, but no one was going to question the power of Aegon and his dragons. In 11 AC, by the time of the death of the High Septon who crowned Aegon, the people would come to accept and looked past Aegon and his sisters. The king always took care to honour the faith and their rights, as well as exempting them from taxation. This may have factored in to the acceptance. However, the question of the practice remained under the surface. Aegon and his queens had no daughters, so for now, this question would not cause an issue. Prince Aenys was the first to marry. In 22 AC, he married Lady Elissa, daughter of Aethon Valerian, King Aegon, Lord Admiral and Master of Ships. She was 15, the same age as the prince, and shared his silvery hair and purple eyes. The Valerians were an ancient family, descended from Valyria. Aegon's mother had been a Valerian, so the marriage was reckoned one of cousin to cousin. The next year, Alyssa gave birth to a daughter. Aenys named her Reyna, in honour of his late mother. Like her father, she was small as a baby, but proved to be a happy and healthy child. She had lilac eyes and hair that shone like silver. 
It's said King Aegon wept the first time he held his granddaughter, in some part because she resembled his lost love Rhaenys, in whose memory she had been named. Prince Aenys was the unquestioned heir to the Iron Throne, but an issue arose as to if Prince Maegor would remain second in the line of succession, or if he would now be behind the newborn princess. To solve this issue, Queen Visenya proposed to betroth the 11-year-old Maegor to Rhaena, but Aenys and Lyssa spoke against it, and a letter from the High Septon to the King warned the match would not be looked on kindly by the faith. The High Septon proposed a new match to his niece, Cerise Hightower, daughter of the Lord of Old Town. The king saw the merit in closer ties with Old Town and agreed to it. In 25 AC, Maegor Targaryen, Prince of Dragonstone, married Cerise Hightower in the Starry Sept of Old Town. Maegor was 13, Cerise 10 years older at 23. Prince Aenys and Lady Elyssa had a son the next year, a boy named Aegon after his grandfather. The prince was described as having a warrior's look about him by his grandfather himself. Though people still debated if Maegor or Rhaena took precedence in succession, there was no question that Aegon will follow Aenys, as Aenys will follow his father Aegon. During the next few years, to the delight of Aegon, Elyssa gave birth to another son for Aenys, Viserys. Then in 34 AC, she gave birth to a third son, Jaehaerys. And finally, in 36 AC, a fifth child, a daughter named Alisanne. Princess Rhaena was 13 when her little sister was born, but she dated on the baby so much you could have sworn she was Alyssa's mother. Rhaena was a shy child who was more comfortable around animals than people. She loved to feed the castle cat and always had a puppy in her bed. Her mother tried to present her a succession of companions, but Rhaena did not warm to any, preferring the company of books. At the age of nine, Rhaena was given a dragon hatchling from the pits of Dragonstone. She named the young dragon Dreamfire and they bonded instantly. With Dreamfire beside her, she grew out of her shyness and at the age of 12, took to the skies for the first time. Not long after, Rhaena made her first true friend, her cousin Larissa Valerium. For a time, the two girls were inseparable until Larissa was recalled to Driftmark. Princess soon found a new companion in the Hand's daughter, Samantha Stokeworth. It said it was Princess Rhaena who put a dragon egg in Princess Alisanne's cradle, as she had for Prince Jaehaerys two years earlier. From those dragon eggs came the dragons Silverwing and Vermithor. However, Prince Maegor and his mother did not share the rest of the family's joy, as Maegor was pushed further, further down the line of succession, behind Aenys and all of his five children, all while Maegor and Lady Cerise remained childless. However, on tawny grounds and battlefields, Prince Maegor far exceeded his brother. In 28 AC, at the Great Tawny of Riverrun, Maegor unhorsed three knights of the Kingsguard before falling to the champion. In the melee, no man could beat him. After, he was knighted on the field by his father with his Valerian steel sword Blackfire. At 16, Maegor became the youngest knight in the realm. Other feats followed. In 29 AC, and again in 30, Maegor accompanied Osmond Strong and Aethon Valerian to the Stepstones to root out Lysine pirate king, Sargoso San. He showed himself to be fearless and deadly. In 31 AC, he hunted down and slew a robber knight in the Riverlands, the so-called Giant of the Trident. Maegor was not yet a dragon rider, though dozens of hatchlings had been born in the fires of Dragonstone and were all offered to the prince. When his young niece Rhaena at the age of 12 took to the skies atop Dreamfire, his failure became the talk of the Aegon Fort. When Lady Alyssa made a joke at Maegor's expense, he flew into a dark rage and replied coolly, there was only one dragon worthy of him, the Black Dread himself. The last seven years of Aegon's reign were peaceful. After the end of the First Dornish War, the king accepted Dornish independence and flew to Sunspear on the 10th anniversary of peace for a feast of friendship with Daria Martel, now the Princess of Dorne. Aenys accompanied his father with Quicksilver, while Maegor stayed at Dragonstone. Aegon brought the Seven Kingdoms together with fire and blood, and on his 60th name day in 33 AC, he turned to brick and mortar. Half the year was still given to royal progress, but now it was Prince Aenys and Lady Elyssa who travelled from castle to castle, while the aging king split his time between King's Landing and Dragonstone. The fishing village where Aegon had first landed had rapidly grown into a city of 100,000, only Old Town and Lannisport were now bigger. Yet, in many ways, King's Landing was still little more than an army camp that had grown too large, dirty, reeking, unplanned, and the Aegon Fort, which is spread halfway down Aegon's high hill and was ugly as any castle in the realm. A confusion of wooden dirt. It was certainly not fit for a king. In 35 AC, Aegon moved with his whole court back to Dragonstone and ordered the Aegon Fort torn down so a new castle might be raised in its place. This time, he had decreed it would be built from stone. To oversee the design and the construction of the new castle, he left Lord Alan Stoteworth, the new hands of the king, and Queen Visenya. Aegon the Conqueror died of a stroke on Dragonstone in the 37th year after the conquest. His grandsons, 
Aegon and Viserys were with him at his death, in the chamber of the painted table, as the king was showing them the details of the conquest. Prince Maegor was at Drakenstone at the time, and spoke the eulogy at his father's funeral, as his body was laid upon the funeral pyre in the castle's yard. The king was clad in battle armour, his male hands folded over the hilt of Blackfire. Vagar supplied the flames to light the fire. Blackfire was burned with the king, but retrieved by Maegor afterwards, its blade darker, but elsewise unharmed. No common fire can damage Valyrian still. The dragon was survived by his sister, Visenya, his sons, Aenys and Maegor, and five grandchildren. Prince Aenys was 30 years of age at his father's death, Prince Maegor, 25.